talking about Yichud Hashem, which is recognizing that Hashem is one, which means that He's in charge of everything and there's no other power besides Hashem. And that's the reason why Hashem created evil in the world, is if there wasn't evil, evil exists so that in the end of days it is destroyed, because if evil didn't exist, then it wouldn't be destroyed, and then we wouldn't recognize that all the power is from Hashem. And that's what he's going to talk about now. He's going to relate what we spoke about last week to Adam, Adam and Eve. We don't realize... Oh, bro. We don't realize that Adam and Eve, we don't realize that the story of Adam and Eve, you know, it seems like very uh, simple when we read it, but there's a lot of deep, deep spiritual things uh, going on in the story that actually have to relate to the whole foundation of humanity. Specifically, Yichud Hashem and the Ramchal is going to tie that in to what we, this, uh, what we talked about last week. Now, what we talked about last week was that Yichud Hashem, the world recognizing that God is one, it's going to, that's when Mashiach comes, and that's when the world will be filled with the knowledge of Hashem, the Yetzirah is going to be destroyed, and we said that there's two ways that that could happen. One, is that we recognize it on our own, the Jewish people decide to do mitzvahs and to cleave, to follow after God. That's one way, and the Mashiach will come, and because we recognize on our own that God is one and that He's the true power. Or, it could be the other way, which is that the world gets so bad that uh, an evil is allowed to to blossom as much as possible. We're on page 68 in the English edition, which is in the middle of Simon Mem, in Rav Chaim Freelander's uh, edition. But we didn't actually start reading yet, so you didn't necessarily miss anything. We're just doing the recap. Um, and we're saying that if the world gets so evil, evil is the opposite of recognizing that Hashem is in control, because it gives the appearance, even though evil was created by God, it gives the appearance that there's another power in the world besides Hashem. So Hashem allows evil to go and get bigger and bigger and to grow. And at the end of days, when Hashem destroys that evil, we'll all recognize, like it'll be clear to everybody that, whoa, the only power that exists is Hashem. So there's two ways that we can recognize Yichud Hashem. One is by doing the mitzvahs, and two, you know, the other way, where evil gets so great that Hashem just destroys the evil and then Mashiach comes. And we're going to learn that all of human history is really could have been accomplished on the first sixth, the sixth day of creation with Adam and Eve. I was just mentioning before, we read the story of Adam and Eve in the Chumash. Right? It looks like a nice story, don't eat from the fruit, he did a sin, very bad, now they're punished. But we don't realize there's a lot more going on there and a lot more fundamental concepts about uh, world history and the basic ideas of why God created the world and things like that. So let's, let's read that, how the story of Adam and Eve has to do with world history. Hello, Tira. Adam and Rishon Atzmo, King Carlo. The same thing that we're describing happened to Adam. We've got to understand this, this topic well. There's so many deep secrets in this story, you know, we, uh, we, we gloss it over. Usually the most important things we tend to do very quickly. So, Parsha's voracious, you know, you usually get like uh, you know, two days to learn it after Simcha's Torah, and it's, uh, you know, we're talking about the creation of the world, and then we're talking about, uh, you know, Adam and Eve, and Shabbos is like a million important things going on there, and we always like spend the least amount of time talking about it. So now we're going to talk about it, even though we're nowhere near Parsha's voracious. We're going to talk about it. It's very important. Okay. God could have created the world with just good and not evil. Had God created the world with just good, people wouldn't have been able to conceive the concept of evil. Right? We would have had, everyone knows, God's in control. Yes, as a God, everything's good, great. Now, why didn't God do that? One is because then we would have no free will. And two is because He's going to say, we wouldn't have understood the oneness of Hashem. If there was only good, we wouldn't understand the oneness of Hashem. And the reason is, as the Ramchal is going to explain again, we can only understand the fact that God is one and the only power if we negate the evil which exists in the world. If, well, by Hashem, not we, but by Hashem negating the forces of evil, what appears to go against Hashem, by showing that they have no power, with that we recognize Hashem. So it's only through the existence of evil that we can recognize Hashem. So had God created the world with no evil, we would never recognize the oneness of Hashem in totality. We explained above. But since God created evil, 
Since God created evil, humanity has the opportunity to recognize the oneness of Hashem. Ba'amnam, Adam Rishon Kvar Ra. Adam, the first man, saw evil. There was a certain tree, a tree of knowledge, in the Garden of Eden that God said, don't eat from. It's the uh, Eitz Hadas, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat from it. That was, God said not to do it. Shekadosh Baruch Hu Asar Alav, you forbade him from eating it. Nevertheless, Adam desired to eat from the tree. He had a taiva. He had a desire. He coveted very much to eat from the tree. And he thought if he would eat from the tree, he would have greater understanding. Like the Pasuk said, the woman saw it was good and desirable to the eyes. He saw right away, Adam saw, whoa, I can make a mistake here. Adam recognized, well, there's a God. God told me not to eat from the tree, but I really want to. So he recognized there's something exists. There's evil which exists here. There's something which goes against Hashem, seemingly. And he said, oh, they were sure, so said, perhaps, he, made, he started making mistakes in his thought process. Well, God doesn't want me eating from that. Maybe that's because there's another God with another power. And, and, and that's, that's why God doesn't want me to do it. And he started making all of these mistakes. Or the other... Uh, Enticements that the snake told him. That's the and the eight Sahara, the evil inclination operates this way today. One of the top tricks of the eight Sahara, I think I've mentioned this before, is that he gets us to think that a avera is a mitzvah and a mitzvah is an avera. He gets us to think that a sin is really a mitzvah, right? You know, the Torah says not to do this, but we start rationalizing. Think, yeah, you know, in, in this case, it's like really important that I do it. You know, just this you know, God understands. Like in this particular situation, if I do this sin, it's going to help me like serve Hashem better in the future. It's really important that I do it, and uh, we make all these rationalizations, and you know, they seem pretty convincing at times. You know, when you're in the moment, you know, now we could like, like look, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Like Adam, what are you thinking? Don't eat from that tree, you know, like, look, all the troubles that we have nowadays because he did that, but, uh, you know, we could talk to ourselves. At the time we're about to do a sin, we rationalize, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe, no, this time it's okay, God will understand because I can do, like, 20 more misses later. If God says, don't do it, you don't do it. That's the bottom line. But Adam here is making all of these, uh, you know, calculations in his head. Oh, maybe there's really two gods, and if I eat from it, I can just be just as powerful as Hashem. Maybe if I eat from the tree, I'll have a Yitzhahar inside me so I can make a bigger, bigger Kiddush Hashem. And that's what happened. Adam was really a wise person. We shouldn't think that he was just, you know, like us, you know, who uh, temporarily gets, uh, you know, wants to eat something non-kosher because it looks like really, really good. No, he was really a wise person. But he should have sat and thought and understood that Hashem told him not to do this. He shouldn't do this. He really, and he, and he really knew the truth. And he, he could have known the truth from his uh, own own logic. Anything that is against what Hashem said is false. And it's part of the evil which Hashem created, right? Who created the serpent to entice Adam? God created him. There's no separate power. Hashem, what Adam might have thought and mistaken, that, oh, this tree and the serpent, they represent a separate power, that I could be just as powerful as Hashem, Adam should have recognized that, no, Hashem created that. Hashem is the one who created the evil in order to test me. But Adam made the mistake. And there's two reasons why. Why did Hashem create the evil? Just to give Adam a hard time? You know? No, because there's two things. One is to be tested so that he has free will, so that Adam could earn the reward himself. And two is that we mentioned the only way to true that a human being can truly recognize the oneness of Hashem and that He is the all-powerful is the existence of evil, is by Hashem negating the evil. So had Hashem not created the servant, not created the potential for evil, Adam would have never been able to recognize the true power and oneness of God. So therefore, he created the serpent. But Adam made a mistake and he thought, oh, this represents a separate power. The Imhai Omei Ben Manasseh, now had Adam done the right thing, and not been seduced by the evil inclination, by the serpent. But on the contrary, had he strengthened in his heart, no, there's one God. God told me not to eat from this. I'm not going to eat from it. Then he would have reached this high level of, of, of recognizing the oneness of Hashem. He would have understood in his thoughts what is evil. And he would have recognized that, oh, there's a serpent here which is evil. That evil is not a separate force. That evil is something created by Hashem. 
and he should have strengthened himself to not violate the word of God. Now, when was Adam created? He was created towards the end of the day on Friday. Right? Erev Shabbos. So had he just passed the test, right? I don't know when it was, like 1 o'clock Friday afternoon he was created. I don't know what time it was exactly. I think the Gemara says, I don't remember. Had he just withstood the test until Shabbos came, and that would have been it. End of human history. Like our sages tell us, Adam would have accomplished in a few hours what it takes for us now 6,000 years to accomplish. Since Adam sinned and ate from the Eitz Hadas, evil became part of him. Evil was strengthened to a tremendous level. Not only that we say that the whole entire world was transformed. Adam, who existed on a... His, what, he, what the Ramchal says, what we call spiritual was Adam's physical. We wouldn't have even be able to see Adam and Eve with our eyes before they sinned. Totally different level. <coughs> Since they sinned, all of humanity was changed <coughs> and evil greatly increased. And what would have taken Adam a few hours to, let's say, be misaking, to rectify and to destroy evil, to recognize the oneness of Hashem, that now takes us 6,000 years to do. And when Mashiach comes, only when Mashiach comes, that is when we're going to reach the point of Adam before he sinned. So all of human history now, we just want to get to that point before Adam ate from that fruit. That's all we're trying to do. The reason that God kind of set up Adam because uh, purposely to show that there is Otherwise, there would be no evil, right? If Adam would just would follow his free will, would follow with, you know, not to get from the from the tree. Right. Had, had he not, had Adam not eaten from the tree, it would have been destroyed. Mm-hmm. Hashem. I mean, obviously, the, Hashem no, knew what Adam was going to do because Hashem knows everything. Right. But man still has free will. Now, as to how that works, that's something discussed by many, 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 many people. The Rambam and then Shmuel Prokim. Very difficult concept, but not not for our uh, discussion now because I'll probably. I mean, yeah, it's pretty, pretty hard to understand. Uh, you also um, said that if within those few hours he was strong enough, all the human history would have been complete. Right. So, so in some ways it could be great that he made a mistake here. Right? So it's, it's, I hear what you're saying, but I, I, it also says that all of our all souls of are included in the soul of Adam. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like that we are, in a sense, part of him. Exactly how that works, I don't know. But I hear what you're saying. You're saying if he didn't sin, like we wouldn't have existed. But it sounds like we would have because our neshamas were really part of other Mauritian. So I'm not exactly sure how it works, but it seems to be something I think like it's that. Down, that, that collectively we we made up yeah. Adam, an, an Adam. Right. So but we were all part of that decision. We made the mistake then, and we're making the mistake every day now. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, we try not to. But but before Adam sinned, the point was there was evil, and it and he had free will. The difference is now is that evil became so much stronger that evil is now a part of us. Evil was not a part of Adam before he sinned. That was represented by the serpent. That was the Yitzhahar. It was an external thing. He was still seduced by it. Now the Yitzhahar became part of us. So now we, we're, we're just trying to get the evil out of us. The evil gets destroyed so that when Mashiach comes, we're starting at square one again, the point where uh, before Adam sinned. That's what we're trying to get to. Now after Mashiach comes, then that's when the Ramchal says, uh, that's when we get to Hashem recreating the world in the spiritual plane, and we get higher and higher. Had Adam not sinned, he, that, spirit, that higher level of spiritual plane with the world being created on a more spiritual level would have happened right away in a few hours. And that would have been, human history would have been a few hours as opposed to 6,000 years. Okay. okay. I'll go a little further. And in that moment, all evil would have been destroyed. Right? Think about all the wars, Holocaust, suffering, babies dying, people getting sick. None of that would have existed how, had Adam just not eaten from that tree. But Adam was seduced by his uh, desires. And he rationalized, he thought, like we said, different uh, svaras, you know, yeah, I can really do this, you know. If, if, I, if I eat from the tree, then I'll have evil inside of me, and then I can make a, a sanctify God's name more by overcoming that evil. Or no, you know, really, there, maybe there are two forces. That God is a God of good, and there's a God of evil. And uh, I could be just as powerful as God, and that's why he doesn't want me to eat from the tree. Maybe that's the truth. This is what the, our rabbis teach us. It says in the Gemara that the Jewish people only served idols in order. A very, very profound statement here, which definitely applies to our modern day. That the Jewish people only served idols in order to allow themselves to commit acts of sexual immorality in public. Meaning, the Jewish people didn't really want to worship idols. 
But they knew if you worship an idol, idol worship is totally different from believing in God. When you, and the Jewish view of God is that there's a God that we subordinate ourselves to, that we have to listen to what he says. When people worship idols, they worship like a thousand different idols because it helped them personally. You know, I'm going to worship the God of rain so my crops grow. Well, they weren't like subjugating themselves to the idol. They did it for their own benefit. So the Jewish people rejected God. Why? Because they had a desire. They had a taiva. They had a, a, they had a uh, you know, they, they wanted to commit acts of sexual morality in public. You know, if you don't believe in God, you can go do whatever you want. You know, why, why do you think many, most, all people, Rabbi says, everyone says, which is also pretty logical and obvious, people don't want to believe in God, don't want to come to shul. Why? Because then I could do whatever I want. I could go, uh, you know, commit, commit acts of sexual immorality in public. There's no God. I can do whatever I want. It's not because they sat in like, you know, for... You know, they, they put themselves in the dark room for 10 years and they learned all the works of uh, Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas and the Rambam and learned all these philosophers and said, oh yeah, logically there's no God. Okay, now, no. It's, uh, it's because they want to you know, do whatever they want and commit sins. So that, therefore, they are, they're seduced by their evil inclinations, which is, we're all on some level, right? We're not all about to go you know, do those sins in public in the middle of the street. But all, in, all of us on some level are seduced by the Eight Sahara to make rationalizations and say, oh, yeah, maybe God really doesn't care if I do this. Yeah. You know, you don't have to say, like, the whole Torah is not true. Maybe it's like, you know, the Eight Sahara wants me to violate this rabbinic law. Like, oh, yeah, it was only the rabbis. God never really said it. But, like, you don't know that God tells you to listen to the rabbis. You know, you can make, there's a million different rationalizations that you can make. But this is on a general sense. It all comes from this source that we have a Eight Sahara desire to do the wrong thing. So uh, we. Uh, we make excuses. And this is what happened to Adam, right? Adam was seduced. He wanted to be powerful like Hashem. He thought he could be powerful like Hashem. So he was seduced and he ate from the tree. And look what happened because of it. It says to the point that Adam was a heretic. What does it mean a heretic? It means at that point, he was seduced to believe, yeah, maybe there's no God, you know. It says that a person doesn't sin. A person doesn't sin unless a spirit of foolishness, of stupidity enters his mind. Because at that minute, right, if a person really, right, right, we're coming into Elul now in Rosh Hashanah, right, think about how if, 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 if we lived our whole lives as we feel like Ne'il and Yom Kippur, like, whoa, God is here, and like, I've got to do the right thing. If we really lived our lives like that, we would never sin. But a person sins because he's not thinking straight. You know, he's like, oh, God doesn't really care if I do this. And then after you do it, the sin, you're like, oh, my God, what was I thinking? That's so stupid. Exactly. Because you had a, uh, uh, it says a person doesn't sin unless the spirit of stupidity goes into his, uh, his mind. But uh, so Adam was seduced by his Yitzhahara, like we are often seduced by our uh, Yitzhahara. And you, you really see, if you, if you look at all the, you know, the movements in Judaism that have strayed from Torah observance, you know, they didn't, uh, they didn't sit, sit, uh, sit around you know, thinking, oh, this part of the Bible doesn't really make sense. It was because in Germany, you look at the history, the, the, the Enlightenment came, the Jewish people for the first time had the opportunity to be accepted into the non-Jewish world. And it uh, bothered them very much that they had this, uh, these restrictions and this way of life, which made them different. So they changed Shabbos to Sunday. The rabbis started dressing like a minister. They had um, took out any mention of a return to Israel. The Reform Movement at the beginning took any mention to re- uh, of a return to Israel from the davening because they wanted to be patriotic German citizens. They said, Berlin is our Jerusalem. Right? Was that from a unbiased, looking at all of the sources and saying, wow, yeah, must be Reformed Judaism is correct and not Orthodox Judaism, not Torah observance. No, it's because they had a desire. In that case, their Yitzhahara was to be accepted by the non-Jewish world and to be like them, and they thought that would cure anti-Semitism and they would have money and power. Now we can go into the professions. We can be college professors. We can be doctors. We don't have to be money lenders anymore. And they thought that was going to solve all the world's problems, so they tweaked Judaism and more than tweaked, they destroyed Judaism to make it how they felt. And uh, how did that turn out, right? Mm-hmm. Saying Berlin is our Jerusalem, they say, um, Ravigna Miller, I think in his, he has a book, apparently, I, didn't, I read it a while ago, but he says that if you look at the way the Nazis went, it follows, didn't you mention this also? It follows the path of the Haskalah, of the quote-unquote enlightenment that really destroyed Torah observance in Judaism. The Nazis followed the same path. Can you imagine a person saying, you know, Berlin is our Jerusalem, knowing what we know now about what happened in Germany? It's unbelievable. But that's the point, that we get uh, seduced by our, our, our desires. Whatever, whatever that may be. Very similar, no, not to that extent, but 